Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amdata Yonkwe Fushala. I hope you guys are doing amazing. I hope your week is going good. And um, yeah, we are back here today for our Wednesday Bible study. And I'm super excited to be here, even though like I'm tired, but we're going to keep doing the Lord's walk. You know what I mean? Yes. So guys, we are doing Amos chapter two today. The last time we did Amos chapter one, and um, we talked about the necessity to help the vulnerable, okay, the poor, the needy. And yeah, and just when I was meditating on that, you know, on that scripture or like just like on the Lord's commandment to love our neighbors as, as ourselves, I just started to think about like the behavior of people. There are people that you're trying to help, but they are very, very rude or just very, very uncivilized, you know, on very, very abusive, okay? And, and then that situation tends to, you know, discourage one and you want to just kind of like stop being nice. And then you, you hear a lot of people saying like, you can't be the nice girl. If you be the nice girl, like people are going to take advantage of you and stuff like that. Um, and this is the part where I say that when we're taking water from the well of Jesus Christ, right, it never actually runs dry. So in a situation where like you are, you experience some type of like, you know, um, very uninteresting or like very uncomfortable situation or maybe lack of a better word, something really bad, right? Um, and you feel like as if, if you had kind of like created some type of like solid sound and boundary that, that you would have prevented something like that. Um, sometimes God actually wants us to get into the needed gritty of certain situations. One for us to actually get the truth about certain, certain people. Um, maybe it's about your family. Maybe it's about your friends. Maybe God wants you to actually, you know, be that good person for us for that season, for that time, for you to find out the truth of a of a, a situation, and then you know you come out of it. You don't stay in those toxic situations. You come out of it you know, stronger and more knowledgeable, more experienced for the next season. And so I feel like, you know, we as human beings are oftentimes wanting to be in the comfort zone, not wanting to, you know, experience change, um, whether it's good change or bad change. We know that if we're going into any type of change, we will be experiencing a mixture of both. And so we tend to like just want to be in the same place and just having the same people around and just like, you know, doing the same thing. And to be scary. Um, so yeah, that's really like our mandate to basically help people, right? It's not gonna be like the same people you're gonna be helping for a long period of time. Although, like there's some people actually are uh, have chose to invest in like people for a long, like long-term investment, okay. Um, building long-term relationships, yes, in this 21st century. Um, really invest in the time, the resources to actually build certain relationships because they know that those people that they are mentoring or they are building up will end up, you know, impacting other people's lives. Um, and so, again, we will experience the good and we will experience the bad in helping other people. But this is what we are meant to do. Okay test the waters and, you know, just follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And you, you would know exactly when, you know, it's time for you to pivot. All right, guys. So we're going to pray before we actually get into Amos chapter two. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for bringing us here today, oh God. I pray, Father, that if there is any sin that we've committed, oh Lord, Father, forgive us and purge us, oh Lord, with your blood in Jesus' name. Father, we will pray tonight, oh Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we ask, oh Lord, that you shine a light upon our lives, oh Lord, in Jesus' name. I pray that no matter what we're going through, oh God, that you will illuminate our lives, oh God, tonight in Jesus' name and provide solutions unto our lives. We're going to let your, your word seep into our hearts, seep into our minds, seep into our souls, oh God, in Jesus' name. To know that we're not our problems, we're not our the situation around us, oh God, that we are about you. 
that you are the center of our lives, oh God. And Father, we give you all the glory, oh God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Lord. And I pray that as we begin this Bible study tonight, I pray that you will minister through me, oh Lord, in Jesus' name. And I pray that you will block any distractions from my end and from the audience's end, oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So in this world that is just full of like, lawlessness and madness and so on and so forth and we all we christians just seem caught up in the merry-go-round of the worldly system and i feel like some things can get to you like you know maybe it's work or your child or your children or your husband some certain things can get to you and that will just like kind of like you know trigger emotions and stuff like that and then like you're kind of thinking about those things but I feel like it's important for us to just go back to the origin go back to you know Jesus Christ who is really the center of it all and for us to kind of you know take one step like just basically just go back to the origin and walk your way back to where you're coming from okay so for example if your um husband did something to upset you um you don't think about like constantly think about what he has done like you need to go back to like jesus christ dying on that cross for you um your purpose in life and literally like gaining that like regaining and recognizing the identity in christ jesus and then walking your way back to that situation, like your character, your behavior, your response towards that situation, your reaction towards your husband will be different. So it's very, very important that we just always go back to the origin, go back to Jesus in our minds, the meditation, right? It's very important. And I had to remind myself this evening, well, it's night now, that my life is not just about work. Like my life is not just about work. No matter how insane the worldly you know system is no matter how crazy work can be like my life is not just about work like the main part of my life is basically like what God has called me to do and really if I'm working and I'm not doing the work of the Lord it's very meaningless like life life just seems meaningless and so I encourage you like the Bible talks about how we need to preach the gospel, go out there and impact people's lives. Things might get to you. It doesn't mean that you're not human. We need to constantly like, you know, by faith, we're working this work of faith. What you know, we're, we're, we're perfect through Christ Jesus by faith. So we need to constantly, you know, come at the feet of the Lord and to ask for forgiveness and, and repent and things like that. It doesn't, it doesn't change the fact that you have been qualified to preach the word of the Lord to people to impact the lives of people. So you need to come out of that imposter syndrome and go and do what the father has asked you to do. Because when you start to do those things, your life will begin to have meaning. If you do those things, you will feel, you will feel less of those emo negative emotions. And so without further ado, we're going to begin this Bible study tonight. We're going to be doing Amos chapter two. And this is basically, um, us just kind of like you know getting to understand the mind of the lord like what is god saying in the season and yep and you're here so amos chapter one like i talked about talked about how we need to help our brothers and our sisters we need to be our brother's keeper um we can't we cannot always be money hungry. And again, if you've read the book on values by Mark Carney, talks about, you know, the system of the world today. And I think it's very interesting. I really want to like, you know, talk about, you know, exactly like what's really going on and to try to explain to you why, you know, money does not have any value and, why all of those things that's happening around you is really happening and it's just a struggle to create some type of balance it's a struggle to maintain a system that is already collapsing already um and again the burden is on the people the truth is that if gold right if gold increases prices and wages actually reduces this is basically economics and so in everything that's in all of the policies, the monetary policies, the every each and every policy, 
is being affected by this, you know, by this economic e economic law, okay? Um, and this is basically, they have an equation on basically how to sort of gain um, equilibrium, you know, in the system. Um, they have decided, right, they have decided that gold would be the, you know, they, they've decided on the gold standard and, and the world is operating on that gold standard, okay? Back from the time of the UK, and you might not even understand what I'm saying right now, and I'm, I feel like I'm not even, you know, explaining it, you know, in a very simplistic way right now. But if you are very curious, you can Google the gold standard, and really, that is basically how the market has been governed, you know, in this day and age. And so we need to be, you know, conscious of like what's happening in the world today, right? Um. But it's pretty sad. It's pretty sad because the it's pretty sad because the banking system, the economy, okay, the economy is based upon the on the, on the fact that prices should always go down and, and wage should always go down and the gold standards should always go up. And the problem now is that once there is any type of like devaluation in in the standard of gold what happens is like they will tend to squeeze you know the people even more like they will like <laughs> they will basically squeeze the people in terms of like you know in, in terms of like opportunity well in terms of wage the wages will reduce okay so you will then not be basically be able to afford certain things, right? People will start to budget, budget their way out of poverty. Um, but this is really much more like it's economic economics topic. I will try to prepare beforehand before actually explaining this topic, but I just wanted to let you know that this is really the system of the world. It's based on the gold standard and yeah, like if you're that type of person that is very much money hungry and you're trying and you do, there's nothing you cannot do to actually like get my money, get that promotion at work, you're all about competition, then you need to understand that you are actually worshiping Bao. Okay. Um, so it's very important that we know let the let the gospel or let the Bible from the Old Testament reflect on our lives, you know, today, because it's the same thing. Like there's nothing that has literally changed. Like it is the same thing. There's an obsession about gold. And this is really how our system, like I said, this is really how our system was built. No matter how they try to revamp the system, it was built. The foundation was built on, on the worship of Baal. No matter how we try to change the system, modernization of the market, no matter how we try to do it, by introducing cryptocurrency, by introducing all sorts of things, it doesn't change the fact that there is a there is a reaction and a counter reaction in the system. There are molecules that are combusting. There is the same system, like it's the same thing. It's the same thing. There's nothing changed. Like the components might change, but it's the same thing. It's based on the gold standard. And so in order for them to actually maintain this gold standard, man always has to suffer. There's always going to be, you know, um, poverty. There's always going to be shortages amongst the people in order for the gold value, the value of gold to actually rise. And it's the same thing, in order for the, the value of money to rise, they have to do, always constantly do this. And there's actually an equation. Um, it's based upon the... Um, the constraints discretion discretion um if you want to go and look into that as well it's an economic economics topic it's basically how the banking system is basically you know functioning uh, constraint discretion and there's a whole equation on, on that as well um to determine many different things okay <laughs> i'm not gonna go too deep into that i'm going to prepare um, the topic for anyone that's really wanting to, you know, um, learn more about this topic, just to let you know, like, 
why, you know, God is really saying that, you know, we cannot continue to worship this gold, you know. There is an obsession with gold. And it's the leaders. It's the leaders, the before it was the king that used to make the people to worship gold. Um, but now it's basically leaders. We know that the UK, they are they were one big guru of the you know the economical banking system. And um, but now basically they're no longer, you know, those the giants. Uh, but there are other countries that are Russia, for example, they're basically taking, you know, the baton. And it's the same system, the same hunger, the same greed, right? Um, and so, yes, they will impose their policies on people that are vulnerable, on people that, you know, don't have power um, to try to, you know, increase the gold standard, to try to do whatever they can to basically use that gold to control the masses. Um, so... Yeah, because if everyone speaks one language, right, they're able to do so much more. And language and money, to me, if, in my own analysis, basically it's a language. If everyone speaks the same language, if every, if there's one language, one communication in the banking system, whereby you know that if I give you, if I if you say a price is uh, a price of one shirt is ten dollars, and I give you twenty dollars, you know to give me ten dollars back right or de determining like the price of like taxes and stuff like that it's very easy for them to actually rule the world and so it's very important that they have the standards to rule for power um for so much so many things in terms of politics and so this is the this is the burden that we're carrying the burden of you know this point you know like they call them kings but and i feel like revelation is the book of Revelation is slowly, it's, it's actually like, we need to actually go back to Revelation because what is really happening in the world today is actually very interesting. When we talk about the uh, the, the roles of this, you know, this president, this leaders in, in, in their push for the doctrines and the principles of, of, of Baal. And we need to go back to the book of Daniel. We need to go back to the book of Revelations to know exactly like where are we in this end times? Because we're very, very close. A lot of things that's happening right now is basically the depiction of like what the Lord has said in the Bible. So we're going to start Amos chapter two. Thus said the Lord for three transgressions. So I'm just going to drink water. Thus said the Lord, for three, three transgressions of Moab and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof because it burned the bones of the king of Edom into line. Okay, so these are these are the iniquities that they have to do, right? These are the iniquities they have to do. In the lecture concerning the gold standard, I'm going to introduce um, videos for you to watch. Uh, I don't know if anyone has actually read the book Oliver Twist before, and um, you would see um, the magnitude of, you know, of wickedness of these people just for one agenda to actually bring about more power, bring about, you know, the, the increase of the valuation of, of money, which we know that money is just, it means to actually control the masses, control people, um, and gain more, 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 you know? Um, and it says, you know, because it burned the bones of the king of Edom into line. Okay. There's a transgression, there are transactions that they do for more. Okay. And I will send a fire unto Moab and it shall devour the palaces of Kiriath and Moab shall die with tumult, with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And I will cut off the judge from the midst thereof. And I will slay all the princes thereof with him, said the Lord. So we see that we're talking about Moab, um, transgressions of Moab, what he did. He burned the king, the king of um uh, he burned the bones of the kings of the king of Edom, right? Um, and uh he said it will send a fire. God said it will send a fire upon Moab, right? Um, because of what he did to the palaces of Kiriath, right? Um, he said, he's going to die with, with shouting and with the sound of a trumpet. And I will cut off the judge from the midst thereof. And I will slay all the princes thereof with him, said the Lord. 
Thus said the Lord, for three transgressions of Judah and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, okay? Like, he's not going to change his mind for the transgression of Judah because they have despised the law of the Lord and have not kept his commandments. And they and their lies caused them to err after the which their fathers have worked. So they were walking in the ways of their father. They loved lies, like, you know, um, deceit, you know, um, in terms of they didn't want to follow the commandment of the Lord. Instead, they would like to follow, you know, the, the other things that is not the truth, false religion. OK, and it says, I will send a fire on, upon Judah and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem. So this is what the Lord will do. And it says, thus said the Lord for three transgressions of Judah and for four. I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they sold the righteous for silver and the poor for a pair of shoes. So this is what they were doing. We know about slavery in the time or in the in 18th century, you know, not just even not very far away. OK. Um, that was still going on. And this was the time when they were actually selling people for silver, for more power. They were selling people. They were selling the poor for just a pair of shoes. That was the transgressions, that the, the transgressions, transactions that they were making. They did not even care about the commandment of the Lord. What was the Lord saying? All they were after was just about building the same mindset that they had in, in Babel, you know, they were trying to recreate the same thing over and over again because of the ambitious nature of man, you know. And we've talked about the, the pride of man. Like, man acts like a city doesn't meet God. The audacity that man had to build, you know, the tower reaching up to heaven, um, what was man trying to do? We talked about that already. Um, it's an atrocity, you know. That is basically, like, you uh, man wanting to, you know, um, break the order of God, you know. Um, just like the way the man is trying to create a system for himself, it just shows that man is in the, he, he was created in the image of the Lord. And so the Lord actually has a system for us. He actually he builds the world in a system. And so man is trying to be God. And so this is a really, 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 really interesting thing to see. And that is why we constantly always need to understand and look up to the Lord God Almighty as our true God and not on anyone, okay? You, I know you have the job right now, but the job is not really what is producing food on your table. It is God. God was the one that gave you the job. God, everything that even that is in that job belongs to the Lord. Everything belongs to the Lord. We constantly need to remember that no matter what's going on in us, in our lives, we constantly need to remember that God is the owner of everything. If you understand that, and if you have a relationship with the Lord, there is the, the way that they, they, they're constantly telling you to prove your worth, you know, in your place of work. It's absolutely unacceptable because you are the righteousness of Christ Jesus. You're a royal priest to the peculiar nation. You know, you don't need to prove your worth to anyone. Just like the way they were trying to get Jesus to constantly prove his worth by signs and, and wonders and, and miracles, you know. And he oftentimes says that if I don't do these things, you're not going to believe. You know, that's the that's the, the mindset of man. They don't, they don't value human beings. They don't value them. They don't value them. They will stone, they stone Stephen. They they keep they crucify Jesus Christ. They will do treacherous things to the righteous because of they, they they don't belong in their system. And so they would rather get rid of them because they don't value it. Right? They don't value it, they don't value them, they don't value the righteous, they don't value people that are not for them. It's the language of the world. Okay, and it says that pans after the dust of the earth on the edge of the poor and turn aside the way of the meek and a man and his father will go in unto the same maid to profane my holy name. So this was the atrocity, the wickedness that was going on back then. It says that pans after the dust of the earth on the head of the poor, all right, and turn aside the way of the meek. So basically, like they were bringing about you know, temptation, destructions, um, you know, even, you know, it's possible that they were actually even creating policies that would cause about people to err, you know, um, I know that there was even a time in, um, in I believe in, it's in the UK that the, the, actually the peasants having Bibles was illegal, okay, and it was only 
meant for, you know, the bishops, people that were in high power, the elites, right? But the peasants couldn't have Bibles, okay? So this was something. And so they, they grew, you know, they grew up 20 years old, 30 years old, 40 years old in ignorance. They didn't know about the word of the Lord. Okay, so you can imagine the atrocity that was going on in their lives during those times because they didn't have spiritual food to eat. And so they were starving and thirsty for the water of life, the, the only water that Jesus Christ can provide. And it says, you know, that pants after the dust of the earth on the edge, on the poor, the edge of the poor. I think that is really interesting. That pants. It says, and the pair and the and the and the poor for a pair of shoes that's pants after the dust of the earth on the edge of the poor and turn aside the way of the meek. Hmm. The pants after the dust of the earth is on the on the edge of the poor. To me, when I read this, it just basically just, it means to me the burden that he put on the head of the poor, the pants after the dust of the earth, you know, on the head of the poor, the burden on the poor, and they make the, they turn aside the way of the meek and a man and his father will go in unto the same maid to profane my holy name. That was what they were doing. A father and a son will be sleeping with the same woman, just like the way one of Jacob's son did, right? And they lay themselves down upon cloths, laid to pledge by every altar. And they drink the wine of the condemned in the house of their God. So this is what they were doing. It says, yet destroyed I the Amorites before them, whose height was like the height of the cedars, and he was strong as, an, as the oaks. Yet I destroyed his fruits from above and the roots from beneath. Also, I brought you up from the land of Egypt and led you 40 years through the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorites. Remember? I raised up of your sons for prophets and of your young men for Nazarites. Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel, said the Lord? But ye gave the Nazarites wine to drink and commanded the prophets, saying, Prophesy not. Behold, I am pressured, I am pressed, sorry, I am pressed under you as a cart is pressed that is full of sheaves. Therefore, the flight shall perish from the swift and the strong shall not strengthen his force. Neither shall the mighty deliver himself. Okay. So let's just backtrack. And then you see basically what's going on. Okay. Just one second here. All right. So you can see the amount of temptations that they're bringing upon the people of the Lord. Okay. The Lord is reminding them what he had done for them, how he brought them out of the land of Egypt, you know, told them that he wants them to possess the land, right? That was the agenda, right? And the Lord told him, told them that, you know, this was what I did. Like I raised your sons to be prophet and your young, young men to be Nazarites. But what did you do with all of my investments? You caused the Nazarites to drink wine temptations and you commanded the prophets not to prophesy there was one prophet in the bible i believe it was jeremiah jeremiah was even wanting they were wanting to actually kill jeremiah there were prophets in the bible that were killed that in the old testament there were a lot of prophets that were killed because of who they were and it says, Be behold, I am pressed under you, right? 
Therefore, the flight shall perish from the swift, and the strong shall not strengthen his force. Neither shall the mighty deliver himself. Neither shall he stand that handleth the bow. And he that is swift of foot shall not deliver himself. Neither shall he that rideth the horse deliver himself. And he that is courageous, he that is courageous among, among the mighty shall flee away naked in that day, said the Lord. Hmm. So the Lord is going to disarm. The Lord will disarm his enemies. These are enemies of the Lord. They are en enemies of the plan of the Lord. These are people that are after their own desires. They're after their own achievements. They wanted to, whatever they wanted to achieve, they would do whatever it took to get them there. They didn't care. They were ruthless. These people are not the people who work in nine to five. These people are deep in iniquity. Sometimes we get so busy, grounded in like our day-to-day -day lives that we tend to forget or tend to just look up to see like, you know, what's going on. But you need to realize that not everybody is living the same reality as you are. Okay? Just because you're working every single day doesn't mean that everyone is actually living the same reality as you are. And sometimes you need to actually check the burdens on your back to see, like, do I need to be carrying this burden on my back? Or share the burden and empower yourself in the Lord. Because it is only God that can strengthen you. God is the backbone, your backbone. And so even when it seems like I said, the world is going bonkers, like the world is just getting destroyed and there's just so much things happening we need to always have faith we need to always have faith and depend on the lord life can be frustrating but you cannot be discouraged you can't be the prophet that, that has stopped prophesying you cannot be the nazarite that has stopped that has started drinking wine because of frustration because they've made the situations of life so terrible. You can't be the prophet that has stopped praying and perhaps they've used witchcraft to block your eyes. The Bible talks about the, the witchcraft of Jezebel. You always need to stand your ground and ask for the Lord to intervene. You can't give up. A righteous man will fall down seven times and will always, will, will always rise up. And so you cannot give up. No matter what, no matter the, the policies, no matter the, the, the circumstances, no matter the persecution, the tribulation, Know exactly who you are and know that you are in a battle and don't expect that your life will all be all rosy and like sunshine and stuff like that. We've come to fight a battle. And so when you're looking at the lives of other people, never compare their lives to your own. You constantly need to strengthen yourself for the battle to come. Because you, guess what? These people are insatiable. They are insatiable. What they're doing is alchemy, sacrificing people, 
the equation they have is alchemy. I wish I could show you this. Um, don't worry, guys. I'm going to do the video on the lecture so you can see how science is not like, and I've, I've, even the course that I took even in the past when I was deeply studying the roots of science and everything, it just, it's man-made alchemy. Like, okay. God save us, okay. Um, but again, not in science, there are good parts and there are bad parts. We're talking about deep, dark science, okay. Anyways, um, just focus on the Lord in this time. Like, focus on him even more. Because... Right now, it feels like a sieve, like we're all journeying, journeying into the future. And you need to take it one day at a time. Like life will happen, you know, but take it one day at a time and think about the present because we're all oftentimes fixed on like the future, the future, the future. But there's some things that are outside of our control. And that will always be fine, regardless of whatever comes our way. But also remember that the Lord is coming. The Lord is coming, is coming. And so it's something of joy. Like it's something of joy to me that the Lord is coming, you know, is actually coming. Do you know what I mean? Like the Lord is coming. <sighs> The Lord is coming, it's coming for us. And so I remember like growing up, maybe you don't, you didn't know this, but I didn't grow up with my mother, you know, and I, she left when I was like seven or maybe even younger. And I remember my, I, my siblings, like if we see any airplane, like we'll look at the sky and then we'll think that, oh, that is, you know, my mother, you know, coming. And we'll ask little children, as little children, we constantly would do that. Having our hope in our minds that, you know, it's actually like she's going to be here. Like, you know, she's about to come and stuff like that. But we didn't, at that point, we didn't realize that we're going to wait even many, many more years before we actually like, you know, see each other, you know. And the story goes on and on. Okay. Um, but again, the weight is basically where we're at for anyone out there that's saying that, well, I am waiting for something different. I'm just like, what could you be waiting for? Like that is not Jesus Christ coming, um, because everything is literally temporary. Um, there's, it's not permanent. Like it's like, it's so fragile. Like it's so fragile. Like you can say you marry the best man in the world. Um, people change. Um, things don't last, you know, like the only thing that you have is Jesus Christ. And that's really what matters. No matter where you are at in this life, know who gave you, know who is your Lord and know who is your savior. That is very important. Joseph, when he was in the prison, when he was even, you know, a, a, the Lord over all of Egypt, he still understood that the Lord was Lord of his life. Okay. Um, so, guys, Jesus is coming. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. Like I, I feel like waiting is something that I've learned to do in my life. Um, and constantly waiting, you know. Um, and I know that you know in the season when we're waiting, the Lord will, you know, make us, you know, wait in, you know, we're not gonna wait in misery. Like you know, we're gonna wait in like okay, good condition. And just my advice is like, don't expect that, you know. Like we oftentimes have like fantasies in our mind about how we want our lives to be. Um, 
I just feel like, you know, just cue those fantasies and face reality and do what the Lord has asked you to do. Like, get to that point where, like, you're, like, doing what the Lord has asked you to do. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just do it. And walk with the Lord. And just follow him. Like, that is really, like, whatever that the Lord has plucked into your life, it's supposed to take you to basically doing your assignments doing what the Lord has asked you to do. If it's the job that he has given you, the funds in the, that he gave you, budget it well and do what the Lord has asked you to do, okay? It is that simple. Um, Remember that you're a servant of the Lord and the Lord loves you so much. He is coming. It is coming. And yeah, pretty excited because we're going to be getting out of the system, getting out of this, you know, ghetto you know, um, and going into a new world, into a new reality. And finally, the Lord will judge us. We, knew, we know the Lord will judge us and we're okay with that. You know, we're okay with that. And we expect him, we long for him, we're happy to see him. And um, yeah, like we're looking forward to seeing him. Every single day, we're looking forward to seeing him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And so we're going to, do a closing prayer now. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Father, for your word tonight, oh Lord. I give you all the glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for no matter the burden that the world has put upon us, oh God, that we know to shake it off, that we know to breathe in, that we know to go to your word, to get inspiration, to, we know to get into your word, to get motivation, oh God. And that we know that every single day of our lives, oh God, we are waiting for you, oh God. We expect in you, oh Father. We give you all the glory, O oh Lord, for your strength, O oh Lord, in our lives. Thank you, Father, for strengthening us despite every persecution, despite the travail, tribulation, the hurt, disappointments. Despite it all, Lord, we give you all the glory, O oh God, for your strength, O oh God, because it is your strength that is functioning through us, your Holy Spirit that is functioning through us. And we give you all the glory, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Abba, I worship you, O oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that you continue to give us the grace, O oh God, to be content with whatever we have in Jesus' name. Abba, I worship you, O oh Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your word tonight, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Be thou exalted, O oh Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Abba. I give you all the glory, O oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. So, guys, thank you so much for watching the Bible study for tonight. And I pray that the Lord will bless you. I pray that the Lord will keep you for the rest of the week. Um, and continue to, you know, shower you, shower you with so much love and blessings. And, you know, and I pray that you hear some good news, good, 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 good news to this week. Before the week, week ends, I pray you hear some good news. And I pray that, you know, this, Lord, the Lord will bring a smile, like a genuine smile on your face. Maybe it's something that you've been expecting this week. It's going to happen for you this week. Okay. In Jesus name, the Lord will make you smile. No matter what is bringing sadness into your life, the Lord will make you smile, genuine smile on your face that and make you happy, you know, in Jesus name, because you deserve it. You know? All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. It's going to be on Saturday. Take care of yourself. Okay. Ciao guys.